I still didn't get the show. Oh, wait, you're not sending the show notes. Duh. Well. You can try it again with your creepy ass voice. No. All I gotta say is my freaking Comic Con pass is about to get sent out right now in the next couple weeks, and I'm Dude. fucking stoked on it. I've never gone. So I was happy that Brandon said freaking, but then he said fucking. I think we need to get a curse jar for Brandon. I did. Yeah. The what? the ladies brought it us up to us the other day. What? You have the mouth of a snake. I thought I was bad. I thought I was bad. What are you talking about? Go listen to our last podcast. You start off the show dropping at least seven to twelve episodes. Yeah. It was it was pretty it was pretty incredible. I didn't even know you could do that. I don't even remember talking like that. I don't that. remember what don't episode remember it was. It was like two like, episodes ago. It talk. must have been when they were talking Clippers because I got really fucking no. excited. No, no, it was in the <laughs> I got really fucking excited. <laughs> it's, and it's funny because, Mike, you don't cuss that much, or at least I don't notice it. But maybe because I edit the podcast afterwards, I swear it's like, F this, F this, F and this, blah, blah, blah. Like, Holy crap, my ears. <laughs> my ears. My virgin ears. My virgin ears. <laughs> let's do it yeah we're, we're recording boys let's get to it to it enjoy the show enjoy the show nice camera action What's up, everybody? Three Amigos and a podcast, a.k.a. 3A. 3A. Episode 46, coming in close to that year, Mark. Six weeks. Here we go. How you guys doing? Good. We are doing very well. Very nice. So, uh, before we get into this, like, super excitement, because... Everybody that's listening, recording on a Wednesday today for two reasons. One, tomorrow we're going to go see the Avengers movie, and it's Brandon's girlfriend's Dama's birthday. Yes, Dama V425. Yeah. Uh, Brandon. Give, uh, her, give her a like yeah, and yeah, follow. Give, give her a subscribe and follow subscribe. YouTube and everywhere. She's YouTube famous. All your DIY fashion advice. Dang, She's going to be able to... Uh, what supply a you fucking plug right there, man? Are you serious, <laughs> dude? She doesn't give us off to we're, Brandon. Let's just go like, <laughs> what a plug! I, I'm right waiting there. for the that plug is, from her. You know, that's incredible, man. That was the uh, three three A needs a plug on the Dama V425 uh, YouTube channel. That for was sure. incredible. Anyways, so uh, as we were saying, uh, Avengers, we're gonna go see it tomorrow. And before Ryan, we get into the super excitement. I gotta know one thing. <laughs> Brandon, what are you doing tomorrow? Oh, God. You know, I am going to just have the best day ever. What are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, what does that entail? It is Dama's birthday tomorrow. Yeah, okay. What are you going to take her to do? And so she is She is currently, so she's still working full-time at uh, One Trust Loans, yep, um, yep. working there full-time, uh, but she's also taking night classes right now. So she's at uh, City College doing a cosmetology class. And I am the lucky guy. I I get to you know go. Uh, I'm getting my my uh, mani- uh, uh, I'm getting my uh, mani uh, pedi done. You know, <laughs> for the first time ever. I couldn't even say it. He <laughs> couldn't even. Say I, it. I, I dude, this is a new experience for me, man. I've never done it before. Uh, dude, wait, I can't believe you're going petty. It, she's the one that's giving it to you. Yes, I mean. Yeah, obviously. Part I'm, of not class, go right? to, I'm not going to go to her class and have some random person do it on her birthday. Her All birthday right. present is she gets to clean my toenails and whatever else they do in a manicure, manicure and pedicure. So, uh... Well, they get in there. Do they? I've had quite a few. I've had a few. I've oh had one. God. Come I on. really don't like when people touch my feet. I've had quite a few. They're pretty luxurious. Um, you know, I'm an only child, as you guys know. Every Mother's Day, I take my mom to the nail salon. We go. Uh, so first, we start off the day. We go to a Zumba class. Then we go get mani pedis. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, they're pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. Don't I'm... let them sell you on the clear coat. They're gonna be like, it's gonna look amazing, but you just you don't feel right afterwards. Well, my 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 uh, sister who's just in town this last weekend was telling me that she thinks that she's gonna try to paint my nails. And I told her, I'm like, that is not gonna happen. Um, I actually already, I trimmed my nails like a week and a half ago, my toenails, and she kind of got a little upset with me. She was like, 
what am I? I'm gonna have nothing to work with now, and all this other stuff. Yeah, that's the and other part. So now my like... fingernails are super long, and I it's driving me nuts because I love to have my nails really short. Yeah, I cut them down to like where the clear part is, you know? Yeah, like that line. Yeah, they don't do that. They don't cut it that far. Well, they I'm, don't do go down I'm gonna, that far. I'm gonna make a special request. I know this person, so she's gonna fail. So hopefully she does. No, but she does uh, right by her customer, and you know I can't believe. That, uh, I mean, good for you. Hats off, obviously. You know, the oh. Boyfriend of the Year award for this. <laughs> but, uh, you know. I'm Avengers. a huge I'm a huge Avengers fan, and it's this the, is tough, it, man. Uh, but, yeah, what do you expect, man? It Priorities. I just, you know, I can't believe you're waiting until now to tell us. You could have I thought us. I told you guys already. You know, to be honest, honest. Dude, no. are you serious? They, you would have been getting so much shit for this the whole time. They, I guess I didn't because you guys were shocked when I told you. And I'm like, I could have swore I told you guys this a couple weeks ago that nope. this is why I wasn't going to the uh, the Avengers uh, premiere or whatever. Yeah, Twinkle Toes. I mean, I thought you'd be honest with this. We've known you for forever. I, I mean, I thought twinkle I was being, toes. I thought I was being honest, but uh, you know. Now I'm, you know, sh- going to share this uh, first time moment with you guys, you know. Well, yeah, everybody that's listening, you know, we're all here. Ryan's here, and we got our new co-host, uh, Brandy. <laughs> Brandy, uh, <laughs> that's right. You can't call me that yet. Not You're until a fine next- girl. You can't call me that until next week, though. Cause Brand- the- Brandy Max. Because my nails aren't done yet. What a good wife you would be. Yeah. Because the sailors say Brandy. That's uh, Brandy Max. Brandy Max. Yeah, that was a good one. That's a Guardians Two. So you're already getting in. That's from their Guardians Two soundtrack. Uh, that's an old song that I used to sing on the karaoke when uh, I was a kid. But it's in Guardians Two. So you're getting ready for Marvel. I can already tell you, dude. Been... I'm so I'm ready so for pumped. this. I'm so pumped. This has been like what, thirteen years in the making. It's... Something like that. It was yeah. like, 08 was the first Iron Man. Yeah, but like even before that, there was there was Hulk. There was Hulk, but I mean, even still, that one kind of sucked. I, that the, one the was first, the that first... one wasn't too related to it. But, Hulk, I mean... but Iron Man came out in two thousand and six. Did it? Did it? I thought yeah, it was we, fre- or we were sophomore in high school when we saw it. That's when it started. So thirteen years in the making, yeah. dude. And you know, I'm excited. Finally coming to a close. I'm a little. It was, it was 2008. two thousand. I'm a little scared to see the ending of it. You know, I feel like this is. We've been working up for this for so long that I'm a little sad to see it come to a, to an end, aren't you? That yeah, that's kind of how I felt, uh, you know, with Star Wars Episode Three when uh, that one happened. It was like the Revenge of the Sith, right? It was like, dude, this is it. Like, this is all we're getting out of Star and Wars. Then, like, but that was really supposed to be it. That yeah, was, it was yeah. supposed to be over. And it was like that. That's it. It's like, oh man, I'm so sad now. And then I but, feel like I, I don't know if I'm gonna like these movies, these Marvel movies after this one. I'm I'm not sold yet. I mean, I mean, they're doing I'm, a good job. With I'm them. sure they'll be good. It's just so much build up. You know what I mean? It's just they've been working towards one thing for so long, and they've done the, the writers have done an amazing job at keeping you know certain things a secret, movie to movie. Mm-hmm. That it's just like, damn, this is it. This is yeah, yeah. This it's is the uh, culmination of whatever. How many movies? Been like fifteen or twenty movies, something ridiculous like some, that. Yeah, they've done a good job with like keeping you interested in the new ones because i even said a long time ago when they started coming out with black panther then the spider-man i was like I, i'm not really excited about these because you know it it's just beginning it's getting too much but yeah, yeah. the way that they've come out with them and they're they're changing everything and the the storylines are so different from one another um, they, they they keep it exciting definitely, definitely good yeah. good time to be alive as a marvel fan and uh, I know, really hope they do. Like, I don't know if you guys. I don't know. Did you guys see the uh, Captain Marvel? Yes, I didn't know. I loved. I, I hope they do it again in this one. So in the intro scene, they do kind of like a. It's it's not the Avengers anymore for that Marvel scene. Mm-hmm. It's all Stan Lee, and I hope they continue uh, to yeah, do that. that. That was pretty cool. That was probably the best part of the Captain Marvel movie, in my opinion, was that. <laughs> Not, uh, the, that, cat, not I mean, the cat part. I, I like, I like the movie. The movie was good, but I felt like that was the the best part of that movie. Um, yeah. That tribute. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Did you guys hear about that guy that broke the record for seeing a single movie in theaters? I this guy w- went and watched Captain Marvel like something 140 times. Holy crap! Got a lot of time in his hands. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. He must really have a thing for Brie Larson too. Yeah, I'd be a little, I'd be a little creeped out, a little, a little weird. Yeah, like, dude, how do you what doing? does this guy look like too? <laughs> God, looks like you. 
He looks like me. Yeah. It's just, just a giant a, blob. With a pencil mustache. Pencil stash and a blob. He drinks like a huge thing of, like a double gulp of <laughs> Yeah, he Mountain looks like Dew one of those and... people in Parks and Rec. Sorry, I know that's my second reference, but. It's okay. What are you throwing over there? Two seam. You got a little two seam going? Two seam. Which yep. way is it breaking? We got the pressure. Oh, this it looks one, like it's going. It's going to be breaking it back into the right-handed hitters. Yeah, that's what it looks like. You got that little wide grip going. Oh, yeah. There you go. There you go. It's a good pitch. Oh, yeah. Get some good it's velocity just, on that. Just stirred it in. Oh, dang. Yeah. That's oh. the curveball. Yep. That's the slider. There right, right. Ooh, oh, ooh yeah. you go cross grip slider? You don't oh, go, yeah. You don't. You don't follow the seam on your mm-hmm. slider? That's. I go straight across with the curve and then overlapping with the slider. Oh. I thought, change your curve, your cur- I thought your curve would dig in a little bit more to the change seams. Change ups, no seams. No seam change? The, the, no li- the listeners have no idea what we're talking about, right? right? No seams on the change up. If I'm getting real fancy. You're going knuckler? That was yeah. my specialty, man. Knuckler? You barely know her. <laughs> <laughs> I, noticed you I noticed you didn't have a, you didn't have a, a four seam fastball on your repertoire. You're not really throwing that one too much, or? It's there. It's just too basic for you. It's there. It's like a white girl getting a I like I like, I like the two seam. Latte, whatever. I like the two seam. Starbucks. Put a little movement on it. There you go. Some Starbucks. Yeah. Starbees. Some Starbees. <laughs> that sounds like a that was, STD. Yeah. I don't I don't want that one. You don't want a Starbees? No. But yeah, dude, I'm excited for this Avengers movie. I was at work. I started a new job this week. It's been going really good. Love the company. Um, they. Uh, all of them, you know, are super into Marvel, so they're all going to see it on that Thursday night, and nice. I was like, this is perfect. I don't have to keep my mouth shut. Hell yeah. Well, I'm here. I can be like, I can just talk it up. Yep. Talk it up. Got to vent. Yeah. You won't be able to vent on our uh I can't talk our, to you about it. Because I'm seeing it Saturday matinee at noon. Yeah, because you're getting your- Are you going by yourself? Surgery. No, me and Dom are okay. going. Just make sure. So, I am freaking excited. Like, this Where are you going? Um, it's some Regal in Chula Vista, but it's five seventy five a ticket. So we'll probably go. pay like you know, yeah, whatever eleven fifty or whatever that is. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's gonna be sick. I'm gonna get some popcorn. There you go. Have a good old time. I wanted to do the earlier showing because it's a three hour movie, and I yeah. really don't want to have to eat dinner at like four or five o'clock in the afternoon as opposed to the normal time at like six or seven. All right, Grandpa. I was concerned for a yeah, second where you're going. Like, where, with are you, that. where are you going with this one? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, yeah, no. But if you do the if you do the movie no, showing yeah, yeah, at like yeah. six, you're getting out at like nine, nine. you know, nine thirty somewhere yeah, in that range because you have trailers and, yeah, and yeah, shit. Yeah. No, I get you. So, um, yeah, yeah. Pretty excited. Well, uh, any other news you guys got going on? Anything else? No. Cancun in a couple weeks for me. There you Pretty go. excited. The eighteenth. So probably what three more podcasts, Some yeah, in that range. Yeah, and uh, you know we got uh, our one year coming up. Like we said, we're gonna try to do some kind of, I don't know, maybe reserve a section of a brewery or something. That'd be sick. See Hell if we yeah. can do like a giveaway for listeners that show up. Anybody that shows up, get like a T-shirt or something like that. We'll figure it out. Hell yeah, man, that'd be awesome. But we gotta accept some donations first. Not yeah, yeah, <laughs> not just... yeah. We need we need you to pay for the shirts. You but... gotta pay for it up front, but uh, then you can have it for free. There you go. <laughs> well, before we really get into this podcast and we do everything, I just have one thing to say, Eddie. If you're listening, you gotta turn the pumps off, man. My dad keeps saying that Eddie listens to tons of podcasts, but at the end of the day, he forgets to turn off the water pumps because they work at the water main. So <laughs> oh I was like, gosh. all right, I know, he, know. I know he listens. I'm giving him the shout out. But he's got, you got a captive listener, though, for sure. Oh, yeah. That's, that's good. That's good, man. But Eddie, turn the pumps off, man. Just don't turn them off, Don't want to remind off, man. you. Just turn, turn them off. off Eddie, just turn it off, just dude. <laughs> We're all, we all want you to turn them off. Eddie, turn it off, man. Just <laughs> shut it down. Shut it down. Shut it down shut it down <laughs> all right let's get into it start off with some nfl news we got the draft coming up thursday so we got avengers and the draft dude this reminds me of last year man i swear it's like because doesn't D- disney owns espn too as well sorry no i know what you mean i know what you mean so um, it's like they own marvel and i don't know if espn if the, so it's like dude what are you guys doing to yourself stagger I don't know those if the draft is on ESPN, is it? I thought it was. Maybe no? it is. Maybe it is. 
You'd think they'd have some influence to be yeah. like, hey, NFL, can you stagger this a little bit so we yeah. can... It's always on a Thursday, though. It, yeah. It's always on it a Thursday. It seems stupid. Like, today should have been the draft or something. Like, or, a fr- I mean, a Friday. They do it because, it because it's through. Thursday, well, Friday, Saturday. And then they have all the, like... They should do a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. I mean, you know, Sunday... Football Sunday. I know. I know. It's always been on Thursday. Yeah. I like it. I like stacking it all on one day. I'm cool with it. I mean, you guys remember last year. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Do you want we to all... tell us about your... Yeah, go ahead and tell the listeners what, what happened last year. So, last year, <laughs> we were going to see Avengers, and it was right before the movie started, and I was unable to, to watch the Chargers draft pick. And the entire off season, I sat there thinking the Chargers have to get Derwin James. No matter what, they have to get Derwin James. You have to move up for him. You got to do what you got to do. He was supposed to be like a top 10 pick. And then... The first 10 picks go by. All these other teams start moving up for quarterbacks, and Derwin James starts slipping down the board. Boop, 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 boop. And then the Chargers finally get their pick in, and I'm like, please don't mess this up. He's available. You didn't have to do anything. They drafted him, and I lost my shit in the movie theater. I just... So much to the point where after the movie, when if you know, sorry if nobody's seen Avengers... Um, Infinity, Infinity War. War yet. You have a year. But after so all the you know the superheroes seen it by now. disappeared, I was like, well, the Chargers still got Derwin James. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little I just, a beacon of light I, at I, the point where everyone essentially everyone was dies. so sad. And everyone I was is, like, <laughs> Chargers still got Derwin James. <laughs> I just remember just like the most random comment after the movie. Yeah, pa- the Chargers got Derwin James, and, <laughs> and everyone in the theater's like, what the fuck? What are you talking about? Who is this guy? Yeah. Spider-Man just died. Yeah, <laughs> Spider-Man like, just, what? he cried in Iron Man's arms and disappeared. <laughs> That's funny. Chargers still got Derwin James. But yeah, draft on Thursday. Um, you know, I, I know we'll get into some, some in-depth of who we think is going to go where. I know we kind of wanted to do our own little three amigos in a podcast mock drafts. Uh, Ryan, I feel like you should go last. Okay. Brandon, I want you to go first. Okay. Um, well, I think we're, uh, you know, we're going to have some, uh, pretty good shakeups this year. Okay. Um, definitely. Uh, starting off number one team that drafted a quarterback last year. I look at, uh, I look at the Cardinals drafting Kyler Murray. I think they kind of had their sights set on him for quite some time, and okay, okay. I, I feel like he's their guy. Um, you know, with uh, with their new head coach in place, I feel yeah, like this he is said kinda... whoever doesn't take him number one overall is a, an idiot. So yeah, he's now in that position, so, so he has to he unless he wants to be an idiot. <laughs> yeah, unless he's, he's got to live up to his idiot. word. So uh, yeah, I look for Kyler Murray to go number one overall. Um, and Nick Bosa, as much as. It would be cool for the you know the the Chargers to move up to number two overall to have the, uh, the <laughs> highly Bash, unlikely the Bash brothers. Um, you know, I look for Nick Bosa to join uh, DeForest Buckner uh, on the Forty ers Have some elite rushers there. Um, Quinton Williams uh, to the Jets. Um, nice solid defensive tackle, um, as well as the Raiders taking uh, Ed Oliver. At the defensive tackle position, okay. especially, uh, you know, their defense has been pretty horrendous the last several years. Yeah. Uh, Devin White, uh, a linebacker out of LSU for the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And uh, number six, I really look for the Giants to go quarterback here. Uh, Dwayne Haskins, uh, I feel like this is the, this is the year that they should uh, target a quarterback, maybe have someone sit behind... Uh, um, Eli, Eli, Man- Manning. Eli Manning for a year. Uh, I know Dwayne Haskins actually even mentioned that uh, you know the uh, you know he wouldn't mind sitting behind the Giants and that you he know, was a redshirt sophomore this year, so he's still a pretty young dude. Makes yeah. sense. Um, and then uh, from there, I'm looking, I'm looking for the Jaguars to kind of supplement their defense, uh, add uh, or uh, uh, offense. I'm sorry, uh, T.J. Uh, Hackinson, the tight end out of uh, Iowa State. Um and then Andre Dillard, offensive tackle. I think the uh, it's time for the uh, uh, Texans to invest in their O line a little bit there, and uh, as well as the uh, this is kind of generally where you see you know some some linemen go off the board. Um, another guard going to uh, the Bills, as well as uh, 
the Broncos, man, they love their defense. They're going to draft a linebacker. I'm looking for Devin Bush to go to. A, um, Devin Bush is probably one of my most underrated, underappreciated players in this mm-hmm. draft. So I'd love that one. I really do. Against your Chargers. So you probably love it, but you hate no, it at I the mean, same time. In the draft, I mean, I'm definitely more on the side of the players have to get drafted into the right organization. I actually don't love that pick for the Broncos just because they're pretty loaded with outside rushers. Um, but if he does sneak into the top 10, he's well deserving of it. He's a freak athlete. Yeah. Well, all right. That was pretty good. That's kind of my quick run through there. Yeah. It's nice and standardized. Yeah. I went, uh, I went a little bit of a different direction. Um, I think that the uh, the Raiders are going to trade with the Cardinals. I think they're going to they're going to swap out. They're going to swap first round picks, and I think the the Raiders are going to trade back their twenty seventh pick because they got that first round. Two, Jacob, they fuck got, you, they, got, they got three first round picks, so I think that that's <laughs> that's the direction they're going to go. Um, so I think the Raiders are going to have the number one overall. They're going to go for Kyler Murray. Then I think the Giants Damn. next are going to go for Nick Bosa. Then I think the Jets are gonna, you know, add a, another Josh Allen to the league. Um, the Jets go Josh Allen. Yeah, I think the Jets are gonna go Josh Allen. Uh, then Arizona got that number four pick from the Raiders. I think they're gonna go with uh, the linebacker Devin White. Uh, then I see Tampa Bay going defensive end, going uh, after Rashawn uh, Gary. I think they kind of got to take best best pick of the draft at that point. You know what I mean? Um, so I think they're going for him. Then I think uh, along with Brandon, I think that the Giants are going to go for a quarterback. I got Drew Locke. Ooh, Drew Locke. Yeah, I think they're going to go for Drew Locke. He kind of, I don't know, I feel like he fits their organization a little bit better. A um, little bit more of a, I don't know, pocket passer in the sense to, to Dwayne Haskins. Yeah, the next Dwayne Gabbert. So I think I think that they're going <laughs> to make that mistake. That's good company. <laughs> I, but if a team going to make Ponder. A, if a team's going to make a mistake like that, I think it's going to be the Giants. Yeah. I think they need to get bit in the ass. So. Yeah. Uh, then I got Jacksonville switching over to uh, offensive tackle. I think they need some some O line support there, so they're taking Jawan Taylor. Uh, then I got Detroit. You know, I think Quinn and Williams on basically every mock draft has gone in the top three. Um, I just don't feel like he's fit any of the you know the needs of any of these other teams. So I think Detroit's going to get a gem here in Quinn and Williams, um, get some interior support. And I think Buffalo's going to switch over. They're going to need some support over there for uh, the other Josh Allen. Um, go offensive tackle, uh, Andre Dillard. And then I got Denver filling in some some D-line needs that they need uh, with Ed Oliver. So those are my top ten. I think it's going to be a little bit of a mix-up up top, and that's going to kind of throw everybody. The, the Raiders are going to be good, unpredictable. It's a good, it's yeah. a good prediction. Um, I'll give you guys my top ten. The, the one thing I'd like to, to bring up um, – with both of your guys' picks, the uh, you never really know how to predict the NFL draft. Exactly. And so I felt like both of you with the the Ed Oliver falling, the the Quinn and Williams falling, it makes perfect sense. Um, defensive tackles kind of seem to get pushed aside as the draft goes on, unless you're an Indomitian Sue or a you know Aaron Donald or well, something like mm-hmm. that. I think they fall unless you need you really really need yeah. it, and it's one of those things that it's like. You can get some big fat ass to plug a hole <laughs> well, <and laughs> anywhere. Like, you know what I mean? The thing like, is, it's just it's deep at defensive tackle this it's year. It's deep in the defensive deep. line yeah. altogether. Yeah, dude, those um, are my favorite players to draft in Madden. Always draft the defensive ends, the nose tackles. All those guys yeah. are just yeah. gonna. Dude, and then you're just, gonna your defense gonna just it's run yeah. support. So like, you just I can't. I really like, and I'm kind of siding with Dean more. As, Dean's more on the aspect that he had Josh Allen and Devin White going really high in his draft. Devin White is the most athletic linebacker that I've seen probably in my lifetime yeah. come out of the draft. I mean, we're talking about not pure linebacker skills where it's uh, a Khalil Mack or a Ray Lewis or something like that, but just most athletic. The dude ran like a four three forty at the NFL Combine. Yeah. He can edge rush. He can plug in the middle. He's a phenomenal player, well, so I like why, that you had him going so high. And I think he's going to go so high because of things that you said, how athletic he is. He can cover a tight end. He can blitz on the outside. He can stop the run. Multi-use, you know, for sure. Exactly. And he's a big body. Yeah. So let me give you my top ten. Um, right. I'm with Dean on the side of the Cardinals trading down. Um, and the biggest reason is because it's still the same general manager. Um, I think he wants to see his guy have a chance. Yeah. Um, and Kyler Murray did so bad on the uh, the quarterback test, the – 
The Wonderlic? The Wonderlic test? Yeah. And I mean, I know it's not as dominant of a statistic that people look at nowadays, but for a number one overall pick, you look at everything. Yeah. And since they traded up last year, I definitely see them wanting to move back in order to get some more of those draft picks that they gave away. So I have Kyler Murray going to the Raiders at number one overall. Uh, I have Nick Bosa going to the 49ers at number two. Uh, Like Brandon was just saying, you know, they have some studs in there. Uh, Armstead, they have uh, Buckner, they just drafted Solomon Thomas. They could definitely use an edge rusher, and Nick Bosa puts them over the edge there. Um, the Jets I have going Quinn and Williams. So the reason I have him going this high, um, obviously talent first and foremost. Um, but when you have somebody that can plug the middle, it's easier to develop players on the outside. Um, and with how many holes they've had in their defense, front seven, I think it's a good piece in order to you know allow your players that are already on your roster uh, to, to improve a little bit. You know, if you have a good guy in the middle, it can improve your your pass rush a lot more. Um, I have the Cardinals going after Ed Oliver for the same exact reason. It's just going to help free up. You know, they have one of the biggest defensive ends in the league, um, led the, led the league in sacks last year. And, and it's just going to help that defensive side of the ball. And Ed Oliver is an amazing talent. Um, I have the Bucks going Devin White. Um, again, pure athleticism. He's the best player available at this point, And it's not somebody I think the Bucks can pass on. Um, the Giants, I have going Josh Allen. Um, who, who is that? Josh Allen. To the, the, to the Giants. They're I do trading not, for Josh Allen. No. no. <laughs> I do not have them drafting a quarterback in the first round, at least with this pick. Yeah. Um, they, to me, Dwayne Haskins, uh, Drew Locke, good players, but we're talking about some great defensive players, and I think Josh Allen, something somebody that can come in and really help that side of the ball. Okay. Um, I got the Jags going after Jonah Williams from Alabama. Um, same reason for you guys, just different player. You have to protect Nick Foles. Yeah, that's got to be the first goal. You had made a huge investment. You need to protect that investment. At number eight, I have the Lions, but I also have an asterisk next to it because this is one of the places I can see another trade happening. I think the Lions are definitely a team that could move back. Um, if they don't, I can see them going after Brian Burns, a defensive end from Florida State. Um, again, just helping up that defensive side of the ball. Yeah. But I feel like this is a position where teams want to move up in front of the Broncos, and I don't think that the Bills want to move back any farther. So I can see a yeah. team coming in here, um, whether it's the Redskins, the Bengals, the Giants moving back up. Um, to draft a Dwayne Haskins. Uh, Dwayne Haskins is probably the smartest quarterback in this draft. Uh, the dude's been watching film since he was 10 years old. Mm-hmm. And I was watching this dude analyze film the other day. It's incredible. Um, so not, you know, you have the dude on the field, but he kind of reminds me of a Tom Brady when you're listening to him off the field because he's just so smart when it comes to you're not, you know, m- making plays as they go. It's a the long-term game you know yeah. how are we gonna you know pressure them right now or how are we gonna get them on the you know the defensive side of the ball uh so i have yeah. him potentially going there um and then i have the bills taking Jawan taylor uh protecting their investment from last year and you got to go best offensive lineman and then draft yeah. at that point mm-hmm. so that's an easy yeah absolutely and then i have uh tj eckerson actually going to the broncos at number 10 hmm the reason is is there's a lot of good defensive players, but they've invested so much money and big money on the defensive side of the ball. And, you know, with Cortland Sutton being as good as he was last year and having um, E.J. Emanuel still putting up good numbers, having Joe Flacco now, you know, maybe he's not the long-term solution, but he's definitely going to give you, a, you know, a good few more years before you need to start thinking about quarterback, in my opinion. Um, so this allows somebody to kind of help Joe Flacco out a little bit more because he does like throwing the tight ends. Yeah. Plus, I mean, I like that pick too, cause you know, Eckerson, not only can he, you know, help Flacco and help that offense spread the ball, but also he's a good run blocker. Yeah, definitely. So I think it's like a double edged sword. Yeah. And they got a couple good young running backs that they'd like to see continue to be successful. Yeah. And like we said, you know, the draft, these mock drafts, it's literally, you see the three of us. 
all of us have completely different you know draft Outcomes, orders, yeah. completely different picks. Well, like we're not similar, in the war room. In the war, so no, we don't similar a, names, but you know what I mean. Like and not it, in the same it, order. It happens every year too. I mean, you heard about John Gruden last year when they were talking about Derwin James fell, and they were sitting there. I think it was at number. 14 or 15 a couple picks before the chargers and they really wanted to pull the trigger on it Mm -hmm. but they've already drafted two high round safeties the last two years so i mean as an organization when players start to fall you start to panic and then you start to go you just you're looking at your draft board yeah and i think that's the part of it that people forget i could easily see the cardinals going nick bosa easily Mm -hmm. i mean because at the end of the day, you know, we even we've done this before back when you two were, you know, huge Charger fans. Like you overlook the 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 best player on the board, yeah, because of needs. And if you're picking in the top ten, it's because you didn't do well last year. So why wouldn't you pick the best player available? Exactly. And you know, a lot of things can happen. I think also, you know, that number one pick. Could be up for grabs. The Cardinals, like you said, could go after Nick Bosa. Or I could see the Jets trading up and going after him. I could see the uh, the Patriots, you know, trading away a lot of stuff yeah. going up I for I mean, him. they'd have I, to. You know, you could see. I could see a lot of potential yeah. moves happening. The Patriots I could see moving, like, within, like, maybe the top 12. But from moving back from 32, I know they have 12 picks in this draft. But it's still, like, the mathematic equation that goes into how many picks or, you know, a fair trade. Yeah. They'd be giving up a, a you know, Dell's ransom at that point. Yeah. Um, but there's de- like that's the wonderful part about it and I feel like the last couple of years we've had some interesting drafts. Last year not knowing who the Browns were going to take at number 1, it was so hard to predict everything after that. If you know who's going number 1, then you know how the chips are going to fall. Yeah. And we've seen right. it before, you know, the year Andrew Luck was drafted, you know, you knew he was going to be number 1, then you knew who was going to be number 2. Mm-hmm. So Things always change. Um, the card I, I sent together that text earlier. The Cardinals are just screwing with us now. Yeah, they, and they, they're like sitting there, like, "Oh, we're uncertain still." Shut up! How can you the be day uncertain? before the draft? You know exactly who you're drafting. The other thing that also is concerning to me is the fact that the Raiders sent everybody home. They sent home every scout. They sent home every media person. It's literally just John Gruden, the owner, and the GM sitting in a room now having a conversation. The Raiders are going like, to fuck this up. But it's like, what are you doing that you can't even trust people within your organization to like say something? Hey, Maylock, the guy that he brought in as the GM, who's never been a GM of a football team in his life, they're going to fuck this up. Is that Mike Mayock? Or... Yeah, Mayock, sorry. Yeah. I didn't know he's their GM. Yeah. Wow! Never, never had any. Wasn't experience. there a GM Reggie McKenzie? Right? Or is that was? He's not their GM anymore. Nope. How long? How long has he been out of the job? I think he, just now. Yeah. Oh, really? It's I the yeah. past year. It was yeah. Like, I mean, like they're gonna go after the sexy picks, and so yeah. on paper it's gonna look good. But we know how this works. It not that way. And it, I do, think, it doesn't. It doesn't swing in that favor. And I think the Raiders have the most to gain from this draft, and they have the most to give. Totally, you can give you have two three first round draft picks, but it's like you can give two of those up. Easy. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, or a trade. The and thing give is, one, is like know? to in order for a team, in my opinion, to move up for a pick, you have to be dead certain that that is going to be a somebody that's going to be within your organization for the next ten to fifteen years. If it's a quarterback, especially. Yeah. I look at Kyler Murray, and he has the athletic ability, and I'm going to end up biting my tongue at the end of this year too, just like I did with Baker Mayfield last year. Um, I see more in Baker Mayfield than I do with Kyler Murray. Baker Mayfield's a football player that understands the game, who I just kind of thought was undersized. And with Kyler Murray, he's undersized, but I feel like his game was based off his athletic ability, where it wasn't like that with, with Baker Mayfield. Um I do look at players like Drew Locke and Dwayne Haskins, and I feel like those are players that can help, you know, a franchise right now, um, if that's something that you need. But it's it's hard to say this year. It's going to be interesting. Um, some of the other stuff I had written down: uh, Bengals, Redskins, and Giants. Definitely teams that are going to be looking at going after a quarterback later in that first round. Mm-hmm. Um, the Chargers po- possible picks this year. I'm you, really hoping. You, you think? Uh, sorry, I don't want to no, interrupt. You're fine. But the Bron- You think the Broncos are going to might go for a quarterback after they just traded for Joe Flacco? No, not at all. Oh, oh I think... I, no, I said uh, Bengals, Redskins, oh, Bengals. Giants. Yeah, Bengals. I, I mean, if they think, I don't think Andy Dalton's going to be their guy. They have a new head coach. I, yeah. I can kind of see them looking at at least bringing somebody in to test him. 
And if you're sitting there, they're drafting at 11, you know, it's a mid to, mid to high pick. It's a good opportunity to take a risk um, without having too much fallout. Um, but for the Chargers, I'm really hoping Dexter Lawrence, tackle out of Clemson, falls. He's kind of my, my Derwin James this year. I'm mm-hmm. sitting there kind of crossing my fingers. Um, other than that, I mean, I, I know it's not a popular opinion, but I could definitely see the Chargers going after a cornerback this year. Um, you know, they lost Verrett, even though they haven't had Verrett for the last two and a half years. Uh, Trevor Williams didn't play as well as he had the previous year. Um, I could see them either, you know, moving Desmond King into that safety spot or, you know, keeping him at a nickel. So going out and getting a cornerback that they could have produced right away would be nice. Um, especially looking at the teams that they're playing against. Joe Flacco's got a huge arm. I don't need to, you know, explain the other guy that plays for the Chiefs very much. <laughs> we saw what he did last year. Um, yeah, so, he's pretty good. And then now with having, uh, you know, Antonio <laughs> Brown playing on the Raiders, they, they could definitely use some help out at cornerback. Where uh, I just got to ask, you know, there was that whole just DJ Metcalf being an absolute beast in the draft. Where do yeah. you see him going? You see him going first round or uh, definitely first round? I, I look, you know, anywhere between like eleven and nineteen. Um, maybe a team like the Panthers. They're always drafting wide receivers in the first round, I feel like. Um, you know, maybe maybe a team like the Giants or, if, you know, if they want to move back up into the first round again, I I don't know. It's hard to say. Okay. I, my pick with him is kind of the Panthers right now. That's who I'm banking on him going to. Um, Dude is a physical beast. Yeah, he's an sure. animal. Yeah, he was. I mean, he it just does, it it always it doesn't always translate into the NFL. So that's why I'm not as as high on him as some people are. But like he's a specimen for sure. Um, and my sleeper picks this year, the uh, the other Hunter Renfro, uh, wide receiver from Clemson. You can't take him from the Padres. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the dude. I mean, he's been on championship teams. Yeah. He's a senior. He. I mean, watch the freaking Patriots got get him. Hands, man. Yeah. Sticky fingers. He's a does. good, reliable player. Uh, whoever yeah. gets him is going to be getting a, a workhorse because the dude puts in work for sure. And then I got Ryan Pope, an offensive lineman from SDSU. Nice. Another guy that I feel like he's a big, strong body that, you know, SDSU is a run-heavy team, and the dude plows holes for people. SDSU doesn't play on national television, so a lot of people don't get looks at him. So he's yeah. another guy, one of my sleeper They picks. run a pro-style offense, yeah. too. So. All right. You got any other NFL news for us? You got anything else? Um, last thing, Chargers pick up Joey Bosa's fifth-year option, which is not much of a surprise, uh, more of a technicality. Well, that I mean, would, that's that why would... he held out for so long and got that money up front. Like, this is what you're paying for now. Exactly. You better pick up that option. So, Damn. The... <laughs> well, that's you, somebody... you know what I... stupid as hell to not pick yeah, it up. Yeah, that's God. somebody but that... I'm just saying, like, you know what I mean? You missed I would out not... on so much. Like, the, the Melvin Gordon negotiations haven't started yet, and... I get it this year, you know, in the day and age we are in the NFL where running backs are a dime a dozen and you have to be the best of the best. Um, I see them re-signing him, but I think they just want him to prove himself a little more. He has had injury issues, but I also think they look at how much money they're going to have to pay Joey Bosa. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, as priorities go, Joey Bosa is the bigger one. I mean, that dude is still, like, what, 24, 25 years old? Yeah. Like, you need to lock that dude uh, up. I can't believe it's been five years since the Chargers drafted him. No, it's been three. This will be yeah. his fourth year. Oh, they said so fifth they, year option. It is his fifth year option. They've already picked it up. They'll oh, pick it up. Yeah. Oh, I get what you're saying. Yeah. They kind of like, it's like it's they bought to, it out, basically. It's to just, they pick up the option and then they can negotiate with the player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. And especially a guy like him, you know that money is the one thing that's really going to because he him doesn't. Going, so. They don't want to play on that fifth year deal. Yeah. Like they they'll get paid for that year, but they want the contract they want afterwards. To know, yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you pick up the option now, it allows you to negotiate. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, that's good. And uh, yeah, Thursday is going to be a fun day. It's gonna I got be- everybody's uh, picks written down too, so we can go back and see. Who was the closest? All right. We're not drinking shots if we get the wrong pick. No, take, God, oh, not God. in this one. No way. <laughs> we'd all be hammered. We wouldn't go I know. top I was 10. We'd go say, like, like top three. I was like, I think I'm going to die. I'm going to go. <laughs> you got to take me to the yeah, hospital no. or something. Not not in the NFL draft, man. God. That'd be ridiculous. And like, there's always that one team that trades up or trades down that you're like, you did, not did you just not coming. know who to pick? Like, is that what happened? You're like, ah, uh, I need more time. Let's just trade it. I could see a team like Denver doing that in all reality. I know that it's like they don't need a quarterback, but I have a feeling 
I just have a feeling that they want. There's several teams on here, man. Like the Giants, I'm not saying they're like. Yeah, yeah. At, at, if they at number six, are like, oh no, we can't take a quarterback. They could easily take a quarterback. They, I mean, if anybody should, they should. They should. I mean, the Cardinals don't need to. The Raiders don't need to. No. The Giants have to. So. In all reality, I'm not gonna lie. In all reality, I kind of hope that Arizona doesn't trade it away, draft Kyler Murray, and then. They trade Josh Allen to the Patriots. Rosen. Be, or, yeah, Josh Rosen. Joey Rosen. Yeah. Josh Joey. Allen's the yeah, other yeah, crappy yeah. quarterback I, that came out of that draft. It's too many names, yeah. too many J names. Yeah. But I hope they trade him to the Patriots because I think that he could be that predecessor to Tom Brady and just keep Maybe. that going. I don't like him. He's a prick. You think he's a prick? He's a prick. Why? He's just a prick. I feel like he's handled this situation very well. Oh, he's well. handled this situation fine, but he's a prick. He, he's a prick. <laughs> like last year when he got drafted, like and his whole thing was like, I'm just like upset that I got drafted 11th. I feel like there's 10 other teams that made a huge mistake, but it wasn't the way like, yeah, he it deli- wasn't, like Derwin like- James said something similar, but he was like, man, yeah, you know, I've been sitting here for a little while, and you know, I, I'm I'm really happy that the Chargers like you know finally you know they came after me and they wanted me blah blah blah. It's like he was happy, you know, that he got so, picked. Yeah, yeah. But like, he's like, they made mistakes, man. Like we we've seen it. Like they put the freaking camera on these players. Like Aaron Rodgers yeah. ring a bell. Like, but he didn't get up there. And he's like, twenty seven other teams made a huge mistake. Like, yeah. Now you got to go out and prove it, and he didn't. He didn't. So yeah, he had a pretty had a pretty bad year. Well, all right, let's switch over. Go to some baseball now. Um, Padres on a little three game win streak. Yeah, man. Swept Patty the got his uh, first win. Yeah, swept the uh, the Mariners. The Mariners. Their little two game. Them, them out or we shut picked, those bats down too, man. Yeah, we, we picked a, a good time to face the Mariners too. Yeah. Uh, they their bats were on an elite tear for a little bit. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, but and, uh, and they've cooled down heavily against us. And the I think it was two hits Paddock, today. Paddock, man, he's looking like the real deal, man. Relent- a was, lot to be excited about. I was reading there. something the other day where the Mariners have out of the their starting roster from this year, the starting twenty five. Versus the uh, twenty five from last year was seventeen different players. Wow! So like they totally revamped a, that team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's paid off. Yeah, paid well, dividends to, for them to start. But now they're definitely yeah. hitting the cold streak. Well, they were. I felt like they were flipping the switch and going rebuild because mm-hmm. it seemed like that's what they were doing because they traded away their closer. Well, I mean, when you have Robinson seventeen Cano, different, like they know. got rid of their best players. Yeah. yeah, I mean, anytime a team does that, I mean, Gene Segura was locked up for a few Gene more years. Gene Segura, yeah. So I mean, anytime you start giving giving away players, yeah. But uh, we care more about the Padres, and our yeah. listeners do too. So stupid yeah, Mariners. so yeah, you know, stupid Mariners. You can... It was good to see him turn it back around, back up three hundred or. Three games above 500. I think is this good. is the, the norm for this team this year. I think you're going to see a lot of ups and downs. This is a young ball club. You're going to have guys who are going to get down on themselves because they're struggling, and other guys because there's not that many veterans on the team. We're actually, I think we're the youngest team in baseball, aren't we? Definitely are. Um, so it's like <laughs> you're just going to see guys who are going to get down on themselves, and then they're going to heat up. And you well, know, we're winning games, and Machado's ice cold right now. And we said it. And last Eric Cosmer. We said it last year when they were a young team. You know, young teams are streaky. Very yes, streaky. Are, you know, and it's it's good to see them put a halt at the seven game losing streak that they had going on instead of the typical like thirteen that they would slide last year yeah. in the past. So. You know, they, they hit rock bottom was 500 this year. And that's that incredible. Was, that was a six game losing streak. They hit 500 and then they won three straight. So it's, you know, for, for 500 to be rock bottom, that's where I, I'm okay with them at finishing the year at 500. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, I'd like I them to do all. better, but, you yeah. know, 500 is definitely a step that's in the right direction. Yeah. You know? Oh, definitely. No, for sure. I, uh, I've been impressed with what we're seeing. Um, Nick Margavius, uh, Margavages, Margavages, whatever. Every time I see his name, I laugh because I start thinking of how you pronounce it every time. Nick M, Nicky, we're, we're gonna, Nick M, Nick M. That's what we're calling him from now on. He's been impressive. Definitely been a quality starter. Um, even uh, what's his name? Kinsler got his back going a little bit today. Yeah, hope yeah, he, yeah. hopefully he can turn it around. Tatis is on a 12-game hitting streak right now. Best mm-hmm. hitter on the team right it, now. It yeah. Definitely earned that leadoff role. He's stealing bases, playing good in the field. Um, it's been nice to watch. Three games in Stupid a row. Pete Alonso is pushing it. I want him to get rookie of the year, but those two are going to be neck and neck all year, I can tell. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Dude, and how good has Kirby Yates been? Kirby Yates is the only pitcher. Dude, I saw this. 
Only pitcher in baseball with a 40K rate and a sub 20% hit rate. He's, he's like, that's incredible. That split finger fastball that he developed, nasty. it's nasty. Yeah, and yeah. he's, uh, I mean, we thought of him as a, he was a, he probably should have gone to the All-Star game last year just from an ERA perspective. Yeah, yeah. But he wasn't a closer and, and saves his, you know, like the, the most The only import- statistic that you get. As That's the only one that matters for any reliever in yeah. baseball. You know, that and then ERA, I guess, is like the second, but. Yeah, but for like the All-Star game, for like an ERA to get you in there, it's got to be like sub two it's gotta be sub one i yeah. feel like yeah. you know it's like it's gotta be fucking lights out yeah but yeah, um, but yeah 12 saves because he was sub two last in. year i think and he didn't get in that's insane but also i think that has to do with you know the organization that you're coming from you know low like pressure you, you, situations you, and you come sure. from a you know a losing ball club you can't have multiple relievers and pitchers going into the yeah. the all-star game you know so you get like, the closer and the setup guy from the padres nobody else but no one knows no one pays attention to who they yeah. are you know but yeah kirby yates lights out 12 saves got his 12th today leads the league um which is incredible the padres are going to go on a little uh you know road get road trip, road trip series i think they go the nationals and then the dodgers is that how they go yeah i got a bunch of um yeah, a bunch of days off all of a yeah. sudden, too. They've had, what, three days off in the last week or something like yeah. that? So, so, you know, a young team, as we said, is streaky. Going on the road is always hard. What do you guys expect from the Padres on the road to see them really develop? I mean, I think they have, what, a three- or four-game series against the the, the Nationals. Nationals. So, yeah. yeah, if they – I mean, that would be a huge series to win. Uh, but, uh, you know, I really want the, these bats to start heating up. I feel like the pitching has – I've been saying – as we said at the first podcast of the year for the Padres that, you know, the bats have, were going to improve, but the pitching I kind of expected to kind of, you know, regress a little bit. Yeah. And I think we're still seeing good pitching. The bats have still kind of stayed somewhat quiet. I really want us to have a, a dominant win where, where we don't need Kirby Yates to go in there and save the game and close the door on the other team because every game has been really close. Every game, we have 13 save opportunities. Uh, I think uh, Trey Wingenter got the other save opportunities because Kirby Yates was had pitched like the previous yeah. two nights before. So it's like every time we're playing this game, it's close and it's, I know it's a lot of it's because the middle relief is blowing these leads, but it's it's tough. I want to, you know, I want to win where we're just dominating well, the other team. I want more insurance than a one run win, and that's what we've been getting yeah. consistently is that one run game. And last yesterday was probably the closest we've had to kind of a a breezy win as a three three run win, but yeah. we don't have any wins over three runs, you know. Yeah, I mean, I feel like a team on the road, if, like you said, they can pull a couple of those games, it's really going to draw a young team together Mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, add more fuel to the fire to, Mm -hmm. like, get the bats going, get the, you know, get our pitching going, get our mid-relievers going. So, yeah, I think we need to see a couple road wins to really have these guys draw together as a unit. No, Uh, definitely. I I mean, you got eight games, four against the Nationals, four against the Braves, uh, two good ball clubs. Um, for me, I mean, even coming out of this four and four, but like you said, getting a win where Kirby Yates doesn't have to go out there and pitch would be huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, putting up eight runs on a team would be phenomenal. Yeah, definitely. Um, outside of the Padres and within baseball, I just want to ask you guys currently right now, in your opinion, who are the three best players in baseball? Well, Christian Yelich is a definite Easy. yes, yeah. As well as uh, if you're counting Mike Trout, because I think he's back, right? Yeah, um, definitely throwing him in the mix. And that third position, third person, I'm going to go Fernando Tot. No, I'm just, <laughs> no I, I, I don't really have that off the top of my head. But um, shoot, give me a second. All right, um, I'll try to think of that third person. Who do you got? Um, I mean, definitely the same two. Christian Yelich. For sure, the best player yeah. in baseball right now. Um, I mean, obviously Mike Tr- Trout. Trout is... would be one if he didn't miss that time. Yeah. yeah. Um. I mean, gosh. There's, there's, yeah. It's kind there's of that a lot person. of people that just aren't playing up to expectation right now, too. I mean, Jose Altuve is always a good one to go. Let's all go with Jose Altuve. Yeah, I can't can't argue. Altuve's got power and contact, so so uh, do it all. I was reading a little article, and uh, you know, statistically. 
speaking, the three best people in baseball. Ooh, Bellinger's not bad. It's, yeah, so it's Cody Bellinger, Christian Yelich, and Mike Trout. Like you well, I'm just saying. never going to pick a Dodger, so yeah. I can get that idea. I know Bellinger's got, what, 11, 12 home runs, something like that? I was just looking at the uh, the team's playing right now. Yeah, so. Uh, but he's been playing good defensively, too. And it's early in the season, so we'll see. And, uh, Brandon, we were talking a little bit earlier about uh, how um, – Billy Hamilton's gonna run against the yeah the Frozone or whatever Frozone name. guy yeah yeah so the, he's like a former Olympic sprinter isn't he so the fastest man in baseball currently is Byron Buxton dude he's quick he he was the number one prospect for a couple of years yeah uh, so. and then the Twins called him up and he's kind of hasn't really lived up to his his stock there but uh, yeah I was just curious who you guys had who was hot. Yeah. No, for sure those those two are the definitive yes. It's uh, Yelich and, and Trout, but uh, from there, um, you know, there's definitely some flexibility there. All right, all right. Well, it's my turn. Get in some hockey talk. <laughs> it's my some turn. NHL. <laughs> my turn, guys. Well, you know, I don't want you to bore us with these NBA series. Oh, you know, the NBA oof. has been absolutely atrocious, and the NHL has been the complete opposite side of the co- that coin. They've been the Backside of the pillow, just super that's, just cool. That's what I liked. And amazing. Last night, you know, the Sharks and uh, the Vegas Knights had their Game 7 series, went to overtime. That was absolutely incredible. Um, I want to start off first with this Toronto-Boston series, though. Toronto was my favorite to win it. Um, you know, they traded for Tavares earlier in the season, as we talked about on the podcast. Mm-hmm. He was a guy that's, you know, from Toronto, had... Uh, the pillowcase and everything. Yeah, or, yeah, had Maple Leafs everything so you know really thought that him joining the team would kind of i don't know bring some fuel to the fire that austin matthews mitch marner it's just you know i really thought that they had something going on they dropped that series um toronto has lost the last three game seven series or last three game seven so Damn, three years tough. in a row they made it to the playoffs game seven they lose it all three of those have been against boston so it's that's, like that's yeah you're that's like shit yeah you're just beating your head against the the wall trying to beat them finally. So there's only been one other team in major sports, so that's like baseball, football, basketball, um, that have consecutive three losses to in a winner take all series to the same opponent, and that's the Miami Heat to the New York Knicks in the '98 to 2000s. Jeez. So it's just like that's such a rarity. You got to figure out the formula to beat them sooner or later. So. That was just unfortunate. Sounds to see. like they just don't match up well personnel wise, though, too. Yeah, but uh, you know, like I said, the series or this whole playoffs has been crazy. You know, both number one seeds have been eliminated. You had two series sweeps. Three series have gone to game seven. You know, the entire playoffs are up for grabs right now. No one knows who's going to win, especially now that the freaking uh, Vegas Knights have been knocked out. They were the new favorite going in. Capitals um, are in OT right now. That's not good to hear. Second OT. That's, I mean... Double overtime? Jeez. Really thought that they could have swept that series, and that's that's unfortunate. But T.J. Oshie had it, suffered a broken collarbone. He, that's a huge loss. Uh, Orpik looked like he got a concussion tonight. Um, but this game last night, man. Yeah, you were showing me some wow. of the clips, man. This is insane. So the Sharks were down 3 nothing with uh, half, you know, 10 minutes left in the third period. Power play. There's Yeah, there's a, you know... A cross check <laughs> off the draw. I just love that word power play. I think <laughs> it's like the lottery. I or paid something. attention. Yeah, do it. You know, cross check off the draw. Ends up going. Pavelski ends up going down out on the ice. His head's bleeding. Looks really bad. You know, uh, they end up calling a five minute game misconduct and eject the player. First of all, I mean, the refs need to do a way better job. I think this was a shit call. I don't think it should have been a five-minute major. It could have been a two-minute power play for cross-checking. It's just the fact that the guy's bleeding, you know, from his head. Cracked skull. That looks like... I also feel like you might be a little bit, you know, upset that the Sharks... No, I wanted the Sharks to win. Okay. I do not like the Vegas Knights, so that's why I'm happy about this. Mm. You know, it was ridiculous. So they go on the five-minute major power play. Six seconds in, you know, they score. A minute later, another one. Another like minute and a half after that, they tie it up, and then right before the power play ends, they take the lead. So it's like that's fucking ridiculous. Mm-hmm. That was just you know a huge momentum shift at the end. 
I uh, thought they were going to win it. Vegas comes down, ties it up with like a minute left, minute and a half left in the game, goes into overtime. They almost play the entire overtime, and then you know the Sharks end up netting that, that final goal uh, to, to win it. But one, I think it's incredible that a team rallied around a player like that. You know, it was just like, listen, these guys are playing dirty. They took our guy out. Let's fucking win this. And they did. That was a vicious slam, too. It was, dude. I mean, and that's the other thing. Calls should be made not on, you know, the result of the player or not on the, you know, the severity of the injury. It should be called action. on what the penalty is. It was a cross check. The action, yeah. Yeah, it's a cross check. That's a two minute minor. I mean, I honestly, I, I understand why they ejected the player. It's on. It's because of his own safety. He would have gotten his head taken off if he remained in the game, and you know that's just not safe for player safety. So I understand why he gets ejected, but at the same time, it's like that's just a bad call. But I understand, you know, refs don't really see it. They just see blood on the ice. They don't have access to replay to see, like, you know, what happened. So they just they make the best call that they can. But that swung that whole game. That gave the Sharks life. And yeah, I mean, they were on the they were on the ropes, and they came back and won yeah. it because of that. So I mean, it was one of the most exciting games I've seen, you know, in a while. Just to see them rally like that and score three quick goals. Three goals in like four minutes, so that was that was exciting to see. Um, like Ryan said, Capitals are in double OT right now. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, playoff rules, they don't go to shootouts. They'll just go down to three on three. And, uh, you know, golden goal, first one wins, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but, yeah, I'm super excited for these NHL playoffs just going forward. But, Brandon, what do you got for uh, for NBA? All right, well, NBA, I mean, uh, we kind of talked about this when we did our playoff predictions. We kind of saw that the the East was going to be very predictable. Um, you know, really, that first weekend kind of gave me some hope that it could have been a good series. It turned out that that game for the, uh, the Orlando Magic wasn't as big as you thought it was, did you, Pete? No, I just thought... The no. biggest comeback in NBA history. No, that was for the Clippers. We had the biggest comeback. No, there's there's uh, there, audio evidence of you saying that it was the biggest comeback I didn't say it was the biggest comeback. I said it was a big win for them. You said it was the biggest mm-hmm. of the playoffs. I said it was a big upset, and it is a big upset. They beat the, the Toronto Raptors. Do we need to go to the lost four games after that. Do we need to go to yeah. the tapes for this? We don't, you don't need to go to the tapes for it. <laughs> I'm just telling you what I said. And I'm clarifying what I said was that they that was a huge win for them because I didn't I thought they were getting swept and I didn't think they had any chance in hell at beating them uh, on the, the road. Words were the biggest upset. I said upset, the not comeback. Upset of the playoffs. I didn't say comeback because by far okay, the upset. comeback upset comeback is for sure the Clippers. There was no doubt in mind because that was the biggest comeback in the history of the NBA playoffs. But. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, the East is pretty predictable. Two two sweeps out there. It was, uh, you know, Bucks swept the Pistons. Kind of saw that coming, uh, with, especially with Blake Griffin missing most of the playoffs, um, and kind of hobbled up in those last two games that he played. It kind of there was no chance in hell they were winning that series. Um, the one that really surprised me that was just not a good series was the Celtics. Celtics, yep. Celtics Pacers was an awful series, and I thought that it was going at least six, if not seven, games. Because both teams are very well matched, uh, I I just thought the Celtics kind of had more of a go-to score down the stre- stretch with Kyrie Irving. As Hayward came alive too. Hayward did come to life, but you know the Celtics were the better team. We yeah. thought they were going to win, um, but you know you would have thought the Pacers would have put up a better fight. Um, to me, it's a coin flip for this the, these last four teams out east. I mean, they're all good teams. Yeah, Seventy uh, Sixers, Bucks, Celtics, and the Raptors. Raptors I mean, yeah. Any one of those teams can make it to the finals. So yeah, I mean, it'll I'm, be it'll be a coin flip. We'll, we could probably talk about that in the next next week's podcast. Kind of go through our predictions there. Yeah, um, but mostly just kind of recap this this one. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, out out east, all the top seeds won. Out west, almost the exact same. At the, up to this point, it's probably going to be that way. I just saw the uh, the Jazz just lost to the Rockets, which I thought that series was going to be a little bit closer. Really, it's up to the. Uh, the Clippers to keep basketball alive for the next week because they have to beat the Warriors or else every series except for the Spurs Nuggets ended in five because that's the only one that's going to at least six. Um, and it's yeah. a tall task for the Clippers tonight. But, uh, 
Yeah, Spurs Nuggets. I could still see that one going seven, um, but otherwise, there's not going to be any basketball for the remainder of the week um, unless the Clippers pull off a win tonight, uh, because wow. all these other teams just got bounced way sooner than I think was anticipated. Um, the biggest one I kind of want to go into detail was was yesterday's game with the Thunder Portland Trailblazers. Yeah, dude, that was that, crazy. That dude that, threw up a dame. That yeah. uh, yeah, th- Thunder really blew this game. Um, and there's a lot of blame that should be going around in that or, that organization, but I don't want to take away from the incredible show that that Damian Lillard put on yesterday. Cause that dude put on a his, he put on a historic performance, fifty points with that clutch. Was it thirty seven feet away? Drained that three with time expiring to to clinch not just the game but the series. Yeah, and then his teammates almost knocked him out for the next and, round. And then uh, you know he's got Paul George on him, which he was. Pretty well defended on that play. Mm-hmm. I think it kind of somewhat caught him a little bit off guard that he was pulling up from thirty-seven feet, and then he was on him though. Yeah, that's he what I'm saying. Him, it yeah. was like it was yeah. that it was wasn't a, bad D at all. That was a tough shot for that far out. It was like and Paul Steph George Curry said would have a tough the, time with that. Paul and George said it after the game. He was like, "That's not a good shot." Yeah, and it wasn't. I mean, you can't. But the, like, I agree with you a hundred percent. But you can't say that after the other player just made the play that won it. It's just a bad well, look for you. I feel like, I mean, yeah. context applying. It, sound, it I mean, sounds bitter he, is what it he sounds. Was, oh, for sure it does. But, I mean, from a defensive standpoint, like, if he lays off of him, all they needed was a two-pointer to win, you yeah. know? Yeah. So oh, for sure. So cut him off, and he did what he was supposed to do, and, you know, he got him back behind the line, way back behind the line. And, I mean... It's not a it's not a high quality it's not a high percentage shot so I mean no it's not a good shot to take but like you're saying it, it does make you sound bitter did, I I understand his his you know context though it's like what do you want me to do yeah it's not uh, how much better can I guard yeah, this guy exactly so I mean like yeah. people, reporters start asking dumb questions and shit and they yeah they, well, they, they I, kind I, of I thought those were twi- the, those were tweets weren't they um, no, they were Lillard asking him after the re- game tweeted afterward yeah but. they were yeah they I. I felt bad for the Thunder, uh, but at the same time, this really is a lot falls on Russell Westbrook. Really poor, poor clock management, I thought, um, as well as they had like a 12-point lead with like two or three minutes left in the game, and you lost it in regulation by three. It just, to me, it seemed like, wow, you really couldn't get off a better shot than what he got off. And, you know, you have other guys who are scoring uh, effectively, and you have Russell Westbrook trying to play hero ball over here, shooting 30% from the field in the game, and his other the, his teammates are shooting way better. It's got to be frustrating to be teammates like uh, Paul George, who just signed on a long deal with him. Um, hopefully he can get his head straight and stop playing some hero ball, because I actually really like Russell Westbrook. But it's hard for me to sit there and like blame Russell Westbrook though when the dude constantly is leading he, the league in assists. He yeah. does, but it, I mean, when the ball's in his hand ninety percent of the game, you better have ten assists in a game. No, you know, I know. Like, I I just I mean, for me, it's an organization like who you're surrounding this dude with. Because Sam Presti or not? Uh, yeah, Sam Presti deserves some of the blame for sure. Yeah, and and I feel like with Russell Westbrook, like. When they brought on Paul George, it allowed him to utilize another weapon, and it's helped for sure. But outside those two guys, they haven't surrounded them with much. Like the fact that Portland won this series doesn't surprise me, especially the way Damian Lillard was playing. If he wasn't playing as well, I could I could have seen it going maybe six or seven games. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you're if you look at teams that are constantly pushing the finals or pushing, you know, the the conference finals at least. There's three, four, five guys there that are good basketball players Mm -hmm. and you have two you have two amazing basketball players i I like steven adams is pretty good and and they have a pretty solid scorer uh dennis Schroeder off the bench but but steven adams is like i mean a to me mid-level center position i mean he like i'm not saying like bottom i think he's top 10 but yeah yeah. okay well top 10 like top 15 like he's good he's good not great yeah exactly exactly. and so i mean it, it just and it's the same issues that they ran into when it's, all right, well, we have James Harden and Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook. Why can't we win a championship? It's like, because you're banking on these three guys constantly. If you look at teams like the Warriors and they have Andre Iguodala coming off the bench or, um, or Livingston coming off the bench, guys that aren't all-stars but people that can play, Yeah. The, the Oklahoma Thunder don't have that. 
I'd like to put a little bit of blame on Billy Donovan a little bit too. Um, I mean, honestly, the Portland Trailblazers lost their center Yusuf Nurkic right before the the season ended, and your your plan of attack is outside shooting, which you don't do well when you should be driving into the paint and finishing at the rim. And Cantor, who's their center, is not a good defender. He's not a good rim protector, and you're not. Your plan of attack is to shoot on the outside. Just to, to me, it seemed like, all right, you talk to your guys, like, hey, guys, we're driving the ball inside, and that's how we're going to beat them. That's the, that's the conversation you need to have with to your me, players. I mean, like, it, in, my, in my opinion, like, this series would have gone a lot different if Russell Westbrook took more shots as opposed to, like you're saying, moving the ball to the perimeter. And I feel like if you have that as your weapon, why are you constantly spreading the ball to – Guys that are, you know... Well, Steven Adams, run a pick and roll with Steven Adams at, at Cantor. You're going to finish 75% of the time yeah. or something like that. That's what I mean. Like, it, it just felt like the, the entire... Like, their, I mean, their offensive plan is built on getting to the rim. Yeah. And they totally went away with that this series. Exactly. I 100% agree. And that's why it's like... I mean, I get, like, the... You know, Russell Westbrook's always going to look like a, a selfish player because he's putting up, you know, triple digit... Uh, or, sorry, you know, triple doubles... You know, mm-hmm. every game, averaging for the last three years, but I feel like you're, you know, his his game is getting to the rim. It's not stepping back, shooting jumpers and threes. Like he has he's the not ability. a three point shooter. No, yeah. so it's like he can do it, but yeah, but it's like so you're taking away your number one asset, and you know, banking on the fact that your subpar three point shooters are going to win you the series. Mm-hmm. I mean, it never looked to me like the Thunder were actually going to win the series. Yeah, yeah they it. Poor yeah. coaching, poor management, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, no, that's kind of, I agree, hundred percent. You, I mean, yeah, hundred percent agree. Um, but other than that, I mean, uh, hopefully, like I said, these uh, these clips can uh, make this uh, this Warrior series. They can steal one tonight. Yeah, uh, well, uh, going let's, six. Let's wrap it up. I mean, double OT just started for the Caps, so you know, let's catch some of the the rest of this playoff <laughs> hockey. Oh jeez! You know, it's, it's time to go. <laughs> hey man, we're playing in the playoffs right now. This is what I'm trying to catch. No, uh, it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. They're gonna lose it anyways. Hey, hey, hey easy there, easy. Hey, there. Hey, I know hey, you're hey. right, but still, come on. <laughs> a, little, a little respect would be nice. Yeah, a little respect. Come on. Well, this is the first week I think uh, ever that we don't have a stat of the day. Yeah. So it's supposed to be your stat of the day, dude. I did it last week. Oh, I'm yeah, I'm pretty sure it was mine, but I don't have anything. It's all right. We'll just play the jingle now. All right. And, well, uh, the jingle, 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 jangle. Yeah. The stat of the day is, where are we all going to be tomorrow? Well, you're going to be getting your nails done. Yeah. We're going to be, be at a movie. A movie. And where are we going to? Where am I going to be later on in the week? Watching a movie, the same movie you guys are. I was going to say something else, but I didn't want to be. I'm vulgar. really, I'm really excited. Do you, for, have a, do you have a hair appointment to get to? I'm really excited <laughs> for this movie. You need to get your back waxed. Honestly, this is. I can already tell you, Brandon's going to not, he's not going to be satisfied. Yeah. Well, with the movie? Yeah. Why? Your expectations are already too high. No. It's not going to be too high. No, I'm really excited for this movie, though. This is going to be. My expectations are high. Mine are. Mine were but mine were happy with anything. Hey, mine were really high for Infinity War, and it was really good, and it lived up to it. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Well, everybody, thank you for listening. Uh, we are the Three Amigos in a podcast. Find us under Three A anywhere you listen to podcasts. Um, we'll let you know. We'll keep you updated on where we're going to do our year anniversary, and uh, we'll go from there. Hopefully, we see you guys there. Hope so. Yeah. All right, everybody. Have a good week. See ya. All right. Later.